Well, thank you. <laughs> Your double double gin and tonic, Mr. Bakuzi. <laughs> That's great. It's oh, nine a.m. in the morning, Orla. Hi, Shik. Oh my goodness. Well, I, John, that looks fabulous. It is absolutely spectacular facility, and this is just one of multiple stations here at their innovation center. Um, and obviously, this is about transportation and travel. But Ola, when you think about kind of the technology and where we're going, there's lots of applications that we're not even thinking about. And that's what this center that is designed for is bringing in uh, advisors, clients, um, the public to think about what's the art of the possible. Um, and it's very exciting. Wow, that is just really and 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 so tangible. You know, our ability to have that tactile experience and experience, of course, these days is everything. Um, yeah, that's just fascinating. And so Wipro's using it with their client base, with uh, to to pull people in and kind of ideate, right, and innovate. Yeah, and think about things like, for example, one of the things that you never we never thought about. I didn't think about as a consumer is. When an airline has one of their um, the the middle area, this middle this little middle device here, the rest armrest, when that breaks, they actually have to down the plane, take out the whole section of that seating, and replace it. Now, every time a plane's not in the air, those are dollars that aren't being earned, right? Yeah. So now with this technology, Wipro can help them calculate preemptive um, preemptive repairs. So they can actually, when they know a plane is going to be in, they can actually repair some of the things prior to it actually needing to be fixed. I think that's incredible. That is absolutely wonderful. And I presume they have more than just, um, you know, uh, the, the customer experience going on, as you said, how, how you're going to maintain, what's happening to that experience, how they're actually, I can see you've got a screen in front of you. So they're probably literally able to look at all aspects of that, essentially that customer journey as they're going yeah. through that uh, that flight. Yeah, and even think about like the stewards that are working the plane. Imagine if, you know, how it's so difficult for them to walk up and down and find out who's got a seatbelt on, who doesn't, um, you know, wh what's happening with customers. They actually have an entire panel that can be done on an iPad or an iPhone where they can literally see how customers are doing um, and even understand if, oh, seat 23B, it's their birthday, and then walk over and say, Mr. Bukutsi, happy birthday. That is so fascinating. And talk about being really connected to your to your um, to your customer again um, on a flight. I just can't get over. You look like you're literally in the air. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite a nice view. You know, and and Ola, when we think about it, it's not just for the airline, right? So as you think about the applications, that's where we have to get the creativity going. What are other devices that are constantly being utilized repetitively that you could do preemptive maintenance? So as you come into these centers, it's not just about an airline coming in, and they just had two airlines in this past week. It's about um, a truck manufacturer or car manufacturer where there's repetitive actions and they may get inspired by things that are happening inside of this one exhibit that they have here. Yeah, exactly so. And I can see the application, to your point, across a lot of different industries. In fact, not just transportation. I mean, we use uh, things within our own homes uh, in a repetitive way that just that analytics and our ability to do that preventative maintenance, um, that information and insight is, is incredible. Uh, yeah. Just even be even beyond that specific uh, use case. So that's that's yeah. that's great. And that's what we've got to do is, is spend a lot more time, I think, in centers like this um, to start to think about applications that could be uh, that could be utilized across multiple multiple verticals. I want to walk over and share another little exhibit that I think is really cool. So just bear with me one second. Sure, absolutely. Sure. And we've, so see, seen these, we've seen these sort of centers um, used, you know, used in, in different kinds of applications. I presume that they also have workspaces to do design thinking and that sort of thing. But these are really great just to have that tangible, again, that tangible, I can touch it. It's very tactile and, and really helps. Well, where you are now looks utterly fascinating. Yeah, this, so this is a actual whole retail section. Yeah, you're, in a, you're in a store now. That's yeah, great. Apple store. And over on this side is the connected workplace. And what that is, is for example, this is a combination that they're working, partnering with real, uh, realware. And so imagine I'm a person on an oil rig 
And with the aging uh, community, right, aging experience, right, we've got all this talent that's kind of leaving the workforce. Yeah. So that 55-year-old man or woman that used to know everything about that oil rig, they're not going to want to fly out to that oil rig anymore. Now they could sit from their home and a new employee could be on that oil rig wearing this device and having an expert in their ear and on their screen walking them through some of the things that they're struggling with, even being able to see what they're working on. Really fascinating. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? And it's quite comfortable. I mean, and, and you don't need the hard helmet, by the way, too. There's a whole other version for like retail. So imagine if you were in a retail store and somebody said, well, geez, I was wondering if you had a pair, you know, a, a, a nine and a half. You could say, well, hold on one second. And they could ask like nine and a half Nike and uh, medium width. And it would show up on the screen and say, oh, we've got we've got one in our other store. Let me get that for you, blah, blah, blah. And virtually do everything just from their headset. But I have to admit that the hat, the way that you've got it on and the helmet looks fantastic. I so think just I, the look. <laughs> I'm an advocate of the helmet. I think we should keep the helmet. That's great. But this also, I think this also gives you, again, tactile ideation that happens instead of trying to imagine in your head how things work. Being yeah. able to take that and, to your point, apply it across other industries that might yeah. be able to use it, um, particularly in the re in the retail space. I mean, I very recently was um, at a retail store here in London um, where they I, I didn't realize until I walked up to the display case, but I wasn't actually seeing inside of the display case. I was actually seeing a screen that was telling me what was in the display case because what they didn't want us to do was open the display case because that was going to release, you know, uh, all of the, you know, the 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 freezer component is going to release all of that frozen air, and they were going to have to spend more energy to keep what was behind the door cold. So yeah. instead, they were just showing you what was there, you know, through the screen. It was fascinating of how just our retail experience has changed. The other thing I found fascinating, I was chatting with one of the uh, gentlemen in the store who, who who was an owner of the store was how easily and quickly the consumer picks up on that and doesn't even question it. We just immediately go, oh, it's a new way to new way to shop. Isn't that cool? And on we go. We don't question it. We don't stop and go, wait a minute, I don't know how to do this. Because it's, again, it's it's very tangible. It's easy. It's it's uh, easy for us to consume and to pick up and to change. Yeah, that's yeah and, I, and I think and I think that idea, I, I can assure you, came out of this I, I, an ideation room similar to the one I'm in where they started to think about like, what, what would happen if we weren't allowed to open up the refrigerator to get more details on items? And it sounds like an impossible question, but when you kind of release your mind and start thinking about what the possibilities are, especially now with technology, it, it, it's endless, right? It's endless. Yeah. That's, that's really fascinating. Well, what else have you learned? I know you've been there for a couple of days. Yeah. So another area that I was really fascinated with was all around um, the idea of advertising and marketing inside of like, for example, they're, they're working right now with a large um, airport in uh, Canada. And so now Coca-Cola or Pepsi can start messaging across um, all boards, uh, either video or different types of interactions. Or what was really cool was, you know, a, a R2-D2 or some some other form going across screens throughout the entire airport, just creating, again, a different type of experience and livening up what advertising used to be. I think that's really in incredible. And, and what's next, as I would imagine, is knowing me as a person going by, kind of what we've seen in movies, right, uh, Total Recall and other things, is um, actually being able to have that advertising uh, simulate to the demographic of the people going by, which I think is incredible. Yeah, it's it's absolutely fascinating. Well, and technology is, you know, emerging so quickly. I mean, I'm thinking AI and our ability to make those connections and do that processing to be able to do that interaction that quickly based yeah. on demographics. So being able to identify the demographic that's around you, the ability to adjust that advertising that quickly, all of that's coming out of, you know, our ability to do, you know, uh, processing of massive amounts of data and the application of new emerging tech like AI to be able to, you know, generate the right insights and change the on the fly, change our advertising. What fascinating times we live in. And these yes. kind of innovation centers, I think, are really crucial to our ability to do that in a thoughtful manner and yet do it quickly because we have to do it quickly. Um, <laughs> you know, otherwise our our challengers are gonna are gonna leapfrog ahead of us. Um, you know, it, certainly as enterprise clients, that's that's what we see. 
Um, yeah. That's, that's fascinating. Well, I want to I want to introduce. We've got actually we're fortunate to have uh, the CTO of Wipro, um, Suba uh, Tadamardi, on the on the line with us as well. Suba, how are you? I'm doing great, John. Um, and Ola, very nice to meet you as well. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for letting us come into your innovation center and have such a spectacular time here yesterday and now doing the show here today. It's absolutely incredible. Awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying this. I, and I hope that, um, you know, uh, what, you, what you're bringing to the table and everything that you're talking about uh, is, is, is not just um, uh, delighting your experience, but also simulating, simulating some creative juices. Yeah. Well, and I think, um, you know, technology is happening and accelerating so quickly. Um, these sorts of centers, I think, I I'm, I'm presume, really help your clients understand how to drive revenue, how to use technology within their, within their environments. Um, how are you taking a leadership role in that? Is, is it mainly just around getting, getting your clients to come in and, uh, I, dare I say, play in your innovation space with you, co-create, maybe co-collaborate? Tell me a little bit about how you how this manifests in reality. Yeah, and 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 I think this is this is where it's very interesting because this is where art meets technology, um, and uh, we create experiences. So one part of what we do is obviously showcase the art of possible. Um, you know, I want us our customers and our clients to come in and say, oh, this 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 is this is what how the real life real world problems can potentially be solved into the future. So that's one part of it. But more importantly, we want, we understand and acknowledge that most interesting problems are solved when you have this experience and this space that will unleash your creativity. Because we all know that there is not one specific formula for solving a specific issue, right? There you, 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 there is, it's all about very quickly ideating, creating an MVP, failing fast, learning from those experiences, incorporating those. And it's this iterative process. And our hope is to create an, uh, an environment for our customers where they can come in and spend those days and, and collaborate with not just their teams, but the ecosystem of partners we bring together for them. We work with more than 70 currently current 70 startups in this ecosystem, active, active partnerships. And we have more than 2000 startups in our databases across the globe that we can bring in for our customers and clients to kind of work together to solve for their problems. If this is in addition to all the partnerships we have with, you know, hyperscalers, uh, large enterprises, all the horizontal players, right? The idea here is to create that ecosystem for our customers that they can tap into and have a space that actually um, allows them to unleash that creativity. And I think it's a very, it's a very deadly combination. And I wish I had known about it when I was in other, other industries before I moved to Wipro. Yeah. Are there going to be, so, but this is in Mountain View, obviously the location I'm at, but yeah. what are your thoughts? I mean, obviously COVID had a detour on the opportunity for us to all visit places like this. What are your thoughts moving forward and getting people either to Mountain View or you, do you have plans to expand? Um, so we are building a brand new 66,000 square foot space in Kodathi in Bangalore, which is our, which is our headquarters as well. And outside of that, we have we are uh, investing in 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 Australia, in Japan, in Middle East, um, in in London, uh, your 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 hometown, Ola. Um, and and this and the idea here is um, again tap into that ecosystem that Wipro current Wipro has, and have our customers be able to spend their time as much as possible here. We want our customers to spend the time in our innovation centers, not just come here for a visit to see what, what is possible, but actually spend their time, spend days, have conduct workshops. We're bringing in uh, some of the Silicon Valley stalwarts as part of our partnerships to kind of, um, these are the ones that have founded companies. They actually teach um, uh, and entrepreneurship in, in one of the top, some of the top universities we are surrounded by here, and then kind of tap into those that resource and then just create the magic for their enterprises. So, so yeah, we are expanding across the globe. Wow. <clears throat> 
what are you what are you seeing as you know your your next trends that are happening in the space? I mean, obviously you can bring your customers in. Is it really in that ecosystem creation and starting to establish maybe emerging technology, even the development of newer technologies? Are you mainly playing with what's there? Are you creating new? You did a little bit of both. What do you see happening? What trends do you see coming at you? Um, it's both. Um, and, and here is what is interesting, right? This is one of the reasons I took this job. And, and then I felt this was a fantastic opportunity. Um, I've always believed that um, run the business in one vertical is innovation in another. Mm. And um, it's interesting, right? Um, we talked about, um, as an example, uh, the deployment, software deployment um, that happened uh, in the in the early 2000s and the evolution that happened. We went from two releases in a year to multiple releases a day. And, and, and all the principles around software deployment, guess what? It's happening in software-defined vehicles now. How do you deploy to... Uh, in the past, it used to be 2,000 node deployment, 10,000 node deployment. And basically, once you have containers across, you know, uh, data centers across the globe, you have, you know, 100,000 uh, deployments. And now imagine those vehicles. And these vehicles are moving. The deployment patterns are changing. But you're, in, you're taking what was now become run the business in a, definitely a three-tier web company into now software, uh, software-defined vehicles, essentially the, the, the automotive uh, industry. And I think that is what is fascinating for me. And that's what, I know, makes me come and jump out of my bed and, and get to work every day because that's, that's, those are the dots I'm able to connect because of my role here. And I'm hoping that we are able to connect that for our customers, not just through innovation centers and through partner ecosystems, but also through our own know-how. And the incredible talent that Wipro has, not just the 250,000 people and 60,000 people that you guys always report us on, but the additional 1.7 million people that actually sit on our top quarter platform. And that's what is exciting for us, Ola. Ola, when we think about like funding some of the technology that Wipro is doing, it's always a challenge, especially now in the economy we're in. How important is cost optimization to help? Can, can cost optimization and strategies help fund some of this innovation? Think about the example that I used uh, a few minutes ago, John, where I walked into a retail store and, and they had a screen that I was yeah. seeing what was in that refrigerated unit rather than actually opening the door and releasing all of that energy and the cost savings that they achieved. And this is what the store owner was telling me, the cost savings that they achieved um, in that area was really only a part of it. The other part of it was supply chain uh, capabilities. So, because they had now the ability to essentially digital twin what was behind that door, they now knew what they needed to order when, how old the product was as it sat on the shelf, right? Their ability to manage the inventory in a small store, that technology seems like it would be expensive. Like, oh my gosh, that must have, so, so your head goes to, it's, it's an investment. Yeah. But actually the amount of cost that they had, the ROI, according to him, the ROI was almost immediate like they, they were able to get a return on that investment so quickly that, you know, as he put it, my, uh, my loan was short term. <laughs> I had a short term loan to make some investment. And as uh, Suva said, it's a lot of it's about working with ecosystem partners. He didn't know how to, it, yeah. how to establish the technology, what the technology was, what could it actually do for him. Um, so I, what I love about innovation centers, and I've always felt this way about innovation centers, is it allows you to actually test those ideas. It's what Suva said. It's testing it. If it's going to fail, let's fail in an innovation center. Let's not fail in the, in the store. But I think yeah. that, cost, that cost optimization is built in to the innovation. And it's we build it in as part of our process. We're looking at that as a part of that financial package of the innovation, um, then I think that's how you drive constant optimization of your of your core cost. It's got to be a part of your equation almost every time, which is why we see the turn to ROI versus just pure investment decisions. Pure investment. And, and Suba, how are you seeing that? That's a great perspective from Ola and our, our side um, and an advisory side. How are you seeing your clients? How are you helping them make those adjustments and justifications to think about the art of the possible? See, um, 
and I've been, and we all have been in our businesses for a fairly long time to appreciate that if you're not thinking about the future, then you probably will not exist in the future. That's right. Um, it, technology is evolving and changing almost constantly. We just were hit by this massive Gen AI release six months ago, and look where we are today. Every business is scrambling to kind of get ahead of it. By the way, the way they released in the marketing was brilliant, but Gen AI as a technology has existed for more for than a two long decades. Time. Exactly. Yeah, for a long time. Exactly. The evolution. I still remember in my two, two, two workforce, uh, two companies before, I remember neural networks model in 2016 and 17 when they came out, the transformer models in 2019. I remember about, you know, reading about it. And it's not that things did not exist. So, so I think what I'm trying to say is you have to be in, I mean, you, the investment into the future has to happen almost on a constant basis and, and you, you will have to kind of secure your future. Having said that, most of what we observe in our customers are they're aware of this. They're very, very aware of it. And they almost everyone wants to understand what is my blind spot, A, and that's why we're pro, you know, they come to we're pro. To, because again, we serve 25 plus verticals, 1,500 plus customers. Remember, that's kind of massive in terms of you know, the number of customers we serve. And then we are able to really pinpoint and really understand what's happening in that vertical from in a technology angle as well as business angle. So yeah. imagine how the, the knowledge that Wipro is collectively sitting on and how we're able to tap into and we want our customers to tap into that collective intelligence and be able to you know anticipate and obviously you're, you're, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen into the future, but at least be prepared for what these trends might emerge and how they might impact their businesses. And I want to go back to the example of talk software defined vehicles and software de deployments. Sure. Um, it's not that Tesla started it first, by the way. Um, it's just that we are known, we know about Tesla the first, but, but remember uh, some of these massive manufacturing um um, uh, John Deere's of the world, and you know, um, they, they have these massive, massive uh, equipment. Um, they are also not human. They are also vehicles in the sense that they are they, they are to you know something similar category. And a lot of that deployment of software was happening in that sector as well. Um, so, so I think that's where we see constantly that our customers wanting to understand what's the next pivot what is what is the next disruption and how can i secure my business um, for the future and then tapping into some of um, some of that collective intelligence that Vipro has to offer you you both mentioned the idea is you almost can't afford not to get involved and i'll give you an example we were at the experience summer isg's experience summit in chicago uh, i mean um, in san francisco this past week and one of the stats that kind of took took me back a little bit is it took a little over 60 years to get 50 million people to drive vehicles, okay? So you think about a technology, by the way, pretty pretty innovative, right? Over 60 years, it took 90 days to get 50 million users on TikTok. So as you think about the stretch of time it takes, yeah. um, it you know it, it took uh, 36 months, I think, to get 50 million on, on Twitter. So my point being is it's just accelerating um, the speed at which things change. So we're not gonna need to wait 60 years for AI to be a major part of how we interact at retail or in manufacturing. It's, it's going to happen in the next 90 days, right? Well, and I think disruption only happens when you're surprised, right? So, <laughs> and so what, what's, uh, and I think, so what Sue was saying, I think that's so critically important is to recognize that we have, you know, that we have technologies that may not be necessarily in our sector or right where we are, but we can make some, you know, we can make some pretty intelligent, you know, we can we can do some pretty intelligent thinking about where we might have some things that are ancillary to it that is going to probably go in the same direction or at least know about what's going on. I don't think it, uh, most of most of our, our customers probably don't know enough about other industries or what's going on outside of their industry that's sitting on the edge that could actually be something that either their uh, competitors or they themselves could use in a disruptive kind of manner. That's where companies like Wipro, who can bring that collective intelligence of what they've seen in other industries or in that same you know, customer industry, I think is so important. And the, and the whole intent behind that is not to be surprised or, you know, at the best, let's be the surpriser. <laughs> let's be yeah. the one that surprises everybody else about how we use that. Because 
you look at, I mean, when you look at what's going on with chat GPT and, and some of these technologies that have been around for a long time, and I think our, our essential human nature of being ready and, and, and willing to, you know, adopt those changes is also getting more quick. And I think that's part of what you're seeing there, John, is it's, yeah. we're far more open and, and, and available to ingest those kind of changes and we're far more comfortable with it because it's coming at us so much more quickly over time. Oh, uh, you know, so now I don't open the door when I go into the refrigerated section. It's a picture on the screen. Okay, well, uh, you know, I'm not really going to question it. Um, yeah, it wouldn't I, have been that way 50 years ago. It wouldn't have been. And, and, you know, some of the reasons why I think centers like this are so critical is they gave an example of maybe two weeks ago, there was an oil and gas company in and they did the retail demo and they left with a new idea for the oil and gas vertical. So in their business. So the idea of coming and getting outside of your office or in this case where we are today in our homes um, and coming to a center where it's whiteboards all around and um, touch and tactile and putting on helmets, I think helps people open up to what the art of that possible is. And I think that's going to be an important component of the future. So, Sue, any last words? I mean, thank you so much for letting us spend a day here in the center. And I'm very jealous, day. John. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you'll come here, Ola. We'll do, we'll do a show together from here next year. How about that? Any other th th thoughts? But thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, it's just thank you. Thank you for for visiting and uh, thank you for having me. I think this. Um, I think what's what's happening today. I think we live in the most exciting times um, from a technology perspective. I think um, we are constantly bombarded by massive amounts of information. Um, we said information was was you know just 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 massive amounts of information, but now technology information specifically has also reached that level, and we need partners that can sort through that and then give us insights. And I think um, our goal at Wipro is to actually be that partner for our customers and kind of clients to kind of you know, see through that massive amounts of information to see what will apply and how they can then um, reach their goals and create um, longevity. Well, I, I think, well, Stuba, I think watch this space is what I'm hearing. And I'm, yeah. I'm really excited to see uh, what Wipro and your and your partners and your customers can do in spaces like this, because I think this is where we're going to see this kind of innovation come into the come into the marketplace. I'm really excited. And if you want to visit, we're going to put an email on the bottom of the screen and you can actually reach out. And um, if you've got interest in wanting to bring your team to this innovation center in Mountain View, you absolutely can reach out and make that request. We'd love to um, have other firms out here looking at the art of the possible. And uh, thank you so much, Sue. We'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Ola, what a what a great conversation, huh? Well, and and she's obviously you know excited about what. Hey, can you imagine um, our ability to go into a center like this, um, you know, right here in London or wherever I happen to be in the world? Um, and, you know, there's there's so much to, to what you're saying, uh, to what you were saying, John, about sort of those things that are maybe not exactly within my uh, area, but just to see something and it spark an idea. And innovation centers, I think, do that for us. You're walking through the retail space. You're not a retailer, but you see something. And I think the question is, what's that? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Is there any way could I could I, use that? How could I use that? Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that innovation centers really do for us. Just fascinating stuff. It's good. Well, listen, definitely you and I will have to visit one of these in the future. And uh, they're calling that we're about to take off. And I need a sheet to bring me another drink. So okay. all the best. We'll talk to you soon, Ola. Take care. All right. Thanks a lot, John. Bye.